guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So it has been a couple of weeks now since Jacob has had his ear tube surgery and I kind of updated you kind of how it was going while we were still giving him drops and stuff. And now I thought it would be fun to kind of sit down after, you know, the recovery process is completely done and talk about the five things that I wish I knew before my son had ear tube surgery. So let's get started. The very first thing that I wish I knew, because I stressed out about this a lot, um, I'm a stressful person to begin with, but I did stress about this, is how easy it actually was. The whole process was very, very easy. I just found it to be something that was a smooth transition and nothing really was stressful that day at all. So the second thing that I'll say kind of goes along with the very first one, and that's the fact that he was himself, like about 15 minutes after the surgery was done, he was completely Jacob. He was eating normal, he was playing, he was, you wouldn't even know he had it done. He was so normal. Um, and that really shocked me. I thought the recovery would take a bit, he'd feel sick, he wouldn't, you know, want to eat, he wouldn't really want to play, just want to snuggle, he might be sore, but none of that happened. He was just totally himself, like I said, maybe 15, 20 minutes right after the surgery. Uh, number three is definitely that the drops were the worst part. I didn't know for one that we were going to have to give him any drops afterwards. So that was a big thing. The fact that I didn't know at all um, until after the actual surgery. And then when I got the drops, you know, they don't really tell you anything at the doctor's office. They just say he needs, you know, four in each ear, two times a day you know, morning and night, try to space it out 12 hour periods apart. It was awful. Those were the worst, worst thing I have ever experienced with him where, you know, you had to pin him down to give him the drops and stuff. And so that's something that I didn't expect. Like there's a lot of things that I thought would be really bad. And that's something that I thought, well, that I didn't even know was going to be an issue or a thing that we were going to have to do. So that, that was really one of the biggest shocks for me. So number four would be the fact that I had to teach him not to play with his ears. Jacob, because he's had ear infections and his ears bug him a lot, he would take his finger and just kind of, you know, wiggle it around in his ear. And that's something he can't do right after the surgery. The doctors were like, try to make sure that he's not putting his hands in his ears. Um, that I thought was going to be a little bit tricky, but all I did is when that happened is I would take my hand and rub it along his ear and I would teach him to take his hand and rub it along his ear, just like this. And so that's what he does now. Like if he is sitting and his ear is itchy, I can see him like watching TV or whatever, and he'll rub his little ear just like that. And so that worked out really, really well, but it was something that I didn't know I was going to have to kind of necessarily teach him not to, I mean, it makes sense. I just didn't know that that was going to be a part of it. Right. And number five would definitely be one of the biggest struggles that I have, and that is that bathing him is a lot different. Now you can get like fitted earplugs for him made. Um, and so I probably will ask for those. The doctor said, you know, if he's just splashing around in the tub or something, he's probably fine. But if he's going to submerge himself or if he's going, you know, to the pool or to the lake or somewhere with dirty water, um, you're going to want to make sure that you've got his ears really protected. Otherwise, just put Vaseline on cotton balls and put them in his ears. To bath him though is a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. And the reason is, is because, I mean, the actual bath is fine, but to wash his hair, I used to lay him down. The tub doesn't have that much water in it. I'd lay him down, I'd come to about here, and I would bath him and I'd wash his hair. And he was fine with that. Um, he doesn't like water being dumped over his head, obviously, who likes that and soap in his eyes and stuff. So I've got to be careful of that. Um, and so one thing that we do is I will hold him like this in the tub and I, pin down his one little ear and I pour water, soap it all up, rinse it all out, and then do the other side. And you gotta be very careful not to get it in either ear while you're doing that. And so, yeah, and so it's really, really tough. I have a really, really hard time with it. So I really, really, really do want to um, get him his earplugs. I'll probably do that. <laughs> I'll probably do that here right away. The next appointment that I have with the doctor, I'm going to ask about getting fitted earplugs for him because I think it would just make my life for bathing easier. And he can have these ear tubes in for two years. And so I want to make sure that like, I mean, we're going to be going to the pool. We're going to be going to the lake. We're going to be doing all of those things. And so I feel like we're going to get used to them anyway. Anyway, guys, that is my top five things that I wish that I had known before we got ear tubes done. Um, he is completely normal now. We are done drops. We are done everything. So he's just a normal little guy. Hey, other than the fact that you got a little cold. 
Um, yeah, so anyway guys, I wanna know if your kid had ear tubes, if there's anything that you kinda were shocked by or surprised by after the fact. Comment down below and let me know. Anyway, thanks for watching and we will see you in our next video. Bye guys. <laughs> Bye.